In the previous episode, we built up the PDC section on a Rec Fusion controller so we could control Canon and two Panasonic cameras. Well, in fact, we only control one of the Panasonic cameras right now. So where we kind of left off is that with this camera, this is the Panasonic camera that we are currently controlling. And if I use the joystick in the simulator, you can see I can move the camera around. We also saw how I could add parameters like color temperature so I can actually change the white balance of the camera. And then if I change over to the Canon camera here, then it won't move the Panasonic camera. No, it will move the Canon camera. So you can see that I'm now controlling this guy. The thing is, the, the last Panasonic camera is not yet controllable. If we go here and we go to the joystick, I can pull the joystick. Nothing is going to happen because the layer has no definitions done by us yet. Now, we could quickly add that. So if we wanted to, Let's just take the left right dimension by choosing that dummy behavior right here. And then the, the way we would do it is instead of picking this uh, Panasonic camera, we would pick the other one and then quickly type up pan speed, submit. It will automatically select a fitting behavior, the one called master behavior called speed control. And I bet that this will now work on this camera. So if I go to my simulation mode and I use this, you'll see that, yeah, I am panning this camera. I am not able to tilt it though because I only added the dimension for pen. So I would need to add for tilt. But now the thing is that I'm thinking, is there a way that we sort of, because I want the same, it's two similar Panasonic cameras. I want to just have the same, regardless if I'm on Panasonic 1 or Panasonic 2. And right now we have it separated out so that every camera has its own layer of things that you want to do, okay? But here is a suggestion. Let's remove this page page number three. So let's remove that one and make this page work in both cases. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to delete this page. And then you see that we only have two pages left. So I want it to be so that if I click here, no, wait, if I go to this, this selector, then I'm on this one. But when I go to this one, I want this one to be um, to be active again. So there's, um, there's a little bit of cleanup that we need to do here. So let's just go and check our camera selector. So this one is selecting page number one for the cam select variable. This one is selecting page two. That means this one will be active. What about this one? It selects the value page three. Now page three is not valid for the variable cam select. Now let's go to cam select and look. It turns out that as I deleted that page, because it was created as a page by the page function, it also reduced the number of options in the variable. And that means we just need to add this option again, because now we're kind of extending this on our own initiative. And by the way, why not? Yeah, I could provide different values for these. I mean, the way we got these names in here is because in the constants for the keys, we typed in those labels, but we could also use them here if we wanted to. Canon, Pana 1, Pana 2. Just if we want to, these are labels that would be used unless otherwise. And the most important thing is that I now have a page three once again. So let's just try number two. And now I select page three as the value for cam select. It works because what you saw a moment ago when this one was selecting page three as a value and it was not here. Let me just explain this. Okay, I just deleted it again. When we click this button and it tries to set page three. It is not allowed because it's outside the options and it will default to the first one. That's what is happening. It's possible to, no wait, not add an option, but I can show more because there's actually something here called, let me see, accept any value. Yeah, so if you accept any value, as I'm clicking this one, we will have page three, even though it's not in the, this list. So it is possible, but you normally don't want that. It's very nice to have it all con, you know, um, confined to the values that are uh, you know, allowed, but it is possible to do this. Um, so that was just a little pro tip to you guys. I'll quickly go back here and select, set this option in again. So now what I want is to not change this one, but I want to change this layer's visibility condition. So I'll basically say, you know, this page two, I, if I add this, it's going to be an all operation. All means that it will be either page two or page three as the values that are available. So as I've now done this, it means that this layer will be visible if cam select is equal to page two or page three. Let's try it. So page two, page three, this is visible, page one, it goes up to that one. So we fixed that. 
right here in this case in this way. That's nice. Um, I thought that the thing is that in both cases, it's controlling the same camera. So if you look at all the behaviors we have done, and if you look at the parameters, you notice that it's device ID 10 that we are all the times controlling. So what we want to do is to introduce a variable that can help us to go between the values 10 and 20. Now, we were a little bit um, crazy because we decided to mess up or mess with the device ID. So we just picked device ID 10 and 20. Normally, it's always uh, enumerated from 1, 2, 3, and so on as you're adding devices. But in, in this case, we did it like this. And uh, we'll now go back to the config and then inside these uh, no wait we'll, we'll create this variable that i just uh, talked about so we'll have one called um, panacam and this can be just an integer variable in the range from one to two okay so that's nice and then i want to use that value up here but before i do that let's just modify let's move over and modify our behaviors here because in addition now to selecting the values, if I click this one, you see over here, it is selecting value page three and page two for the um, cam select variable. I want show more and add an event handler that will select something else. Now, um, it works like this. A behavior has typically a parameter on the very top level, and that is like the default parameter that anything in the behavior would work with if you are, are changing it or if you are putting the using default and conditional feedback, you are invited to use this one up here because that gives you the, this is how all the Skahoy standard master behaviors are, are made. That is from having references to this parameter up here. And this is why you can just select that one and then it's gonna be used everywhere else. So we are benefiting from that with the default function of set value. But what we are doing now is in addition, creating an additional event handler, we'll call it uh, cam select like this, all right? And inside of this one, we need to pick which handler type is it. It's a binary handler, that means buttons. It's when we press it down and not release it. It is any edge we press, doesn't matter. It is a set operation and it needs to set a value for what? Well, not set a value for cam select, no. It is setting a value for the parameter that we are setting here. Now, if we don't set this parameter to something else than cam, uh, than cam select up there, then we are in trouble because it will then set it for cam select. No, we need it for the Panacam. That's the variable we created to go between numbers one and two for the Panasonic cameras, this one over here, okay? So we picked that and now it makes sense to go into set values and say, okay, literal values, I wanna pick 10 as the value we are setting when I'm pressing, let me see, that button. Okay, let's just see if that happens. And by the way, this won't work because we know that this uh, will confine itself to the numbers one to two. So we should probably set a max of like 100 or we could also create options if we wanted to. So let's just check it. I click, it went to 10, success. I click over here, nothing happens. Why? Because I have only modified this guy. So I added an event handler on this one, okay? For the index 10. Now. Um, I, I, I could do it over here real quick. Let's do that. But I have smarter ways, which I'll introduce you for in a moment. No, wait, 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 wait. We already know that it could be smarter than this. We already know. Okay, so we know master behaviors. And let's go to this, to the layer here. And then we'll say, let's create a new master behavior, cell, And we copy that from key A20. All right, create. And then we can go to this master behavior and we can see that, yeah, it's gonna select page number two. And that means unless we override it in the constants, it will, yeah, it will just do that. Um, okay, so the thing is inside of here, we have the event handler cam select, it sets the value 10 here. So now what, what we'll typically do is to go back to A20 and A30, and then we will make those two depend on the new one we just created, Panas Select. Okay, so we'll just pick this one, yes. And then I, I actually don't need to change the constants for this one because it's already baked into the uh, master behavior. 
so in a sense, I can just leave it as it is, but I can actually create, uh, you know, remove my event handler over written because I have it in my master behavior underneath. The master behavior is laying, lying underneath with all the settings that I put into A20 originally. So now for A20, I picked that master behavior to work from, and then I can remove all the uh, overridden content that I put into it, including the, the cons constant actually. But the most important thing is going to A30 because as we are now selecting Pana cell as our master behavior here, then um, what we have right, right now is a situation where regardless if I press that button, it says page one or this one, you know, it's giving us the same thing. No, actually, it is not setting page two. And why is that? I'm not 100% sure. But let's just go to A20 and A30 and say, yeah, we need to set Pana1 as the value in that one. And here, Pana2 in that one. Let's just check. Let's check. And by the way, let's just clear this variable to something else. You can go to show more. There's a little box here in the bottom that can force a value. So let's take 45 so that we can just see this is value completely out of range, doesn't have any meaning. And then let's just go in here. Now, watch these two values, okay? We are currently, yeah, I click. It says page two and 10. That's nice. Now let's go check this, change this one again, 45. And then click this one, page three, but 10 once again. Now, why? How can we do this better? Because it's because here we are only changing the match value, but for 30, like this one, this button over here, button number 30, we should go into show more. We open up the cam select trigger and we would need to now go and change this value, set it to, to 20, okay? So just submit this. And now let's check it once again. Watch the values down here. I click here, okay, two, I click here, it says page 320. This is perfect. Now we can start using this to uh, influence the parameters we have up here on this layer. So let's just go here and then for this one, instead of that hard coded 10, let's just remove this selection. And then down here for the cameras, we use this one, select core advanced. If we do that, then up here, we are already invited to choose a variable to drive the selection of the camera. If you notice the device core string up here, it, it is referring to the Panasonic PTC device core, but this field is incomplete. It says var colon, and that's because no variable is selected. But if we pick Panasonic cam, Panacam variable, then you see that it will take the value of that variable and put right into that field. That's awesome. Now, um, that's, that's what we need to do. We need to do it here. I'll do it on the next one. Let me just go out of this mode. Okay, so we are here. I'm just watching what happens up here. I could also choose to edit this raw if I want. So this is another way you can do it, but Pana cam. So if you have a really steady hand, you could do that. Just substitute the 10 with the reference to Pana cam. Bar colon is uh, prefixed. And no, I don't want to change because I'm happy with step change long range. That was a good one. And then we'll just move over here, do the same for these. Um, you know, we could probably just mark these and then, oh, let's just see, let's just see. Let's pick this one. Let's pick this one, use the batch editor, drag across these. We now have five items. Uh, no, we have not five items. Oh, discouraging. Let's pick this one, hold down command. Oh, hold down command, shift drag across. I think I have five items selected. What I wanted was to have this one as the top one. See the one that has the variable thing inside, because if I am right there, I can just copy it down. Ooh, no, 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 no. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. See, the thing is that all these very, you know, all these parameters are different. No, 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 no. Bad idea. Bad idea. Okay. I'll just paste it in here like I did before. Just edit raw. Substitute 10 by var panacam really quick. Now, of course, if you did this and you knew that you wanted this flexibility, you would have done it from the beginning. I realize that. But right now we are not that lucky. So we need to do it this way. Okay, we can now check if this works for us. All right, so we have our Panasonic cameras. This is camera number two. So let's go to simulation mode and then see do we control white balance? Yes, it seems like we are controlling white balance on this guy. Let's just use the joystick. Yes, we can navigate the camera and 
so on. That's nice. Okay. So uh, if we go to the other Panasonic camera, I just want to check, reality check. It's not controlling this one, is it? No, it's not. Okay, so let's just go over here. Now notice that as I'm pressing that key, this one will change. Let's see if we can scroll a little bit. These values are going to change. Are you ready? I click. They change to page 2 and 10. Now, in many ways, uh, actually, you did see a difference, didn't you? You see a difference here because on the diff, you know, on the one and the other Panasonic cameras, these settings are different. All right. So, but on the first one here, um, what happens if I change? Yep, it seems like white balance is changing. Can the joystick control do something for me? Yes, it can. What about the other Panasonic camera? Mm, no can do. So that's great. That means that we have now used a single layer selected by both these keys, which in addition is changing the pan and cam variable to either pick ID number 10 or 20. And those IDs are coming from our homepage where we had these Panasonic cameras 10 and 20 lined up. So the advantage I get on configuration here is that I, because these are Panasonic cameras, it is very likely that the features that I want to put onto the knobs up here in the menu are going to be exactly the same. They will be different for the Canon camera. Makes sense because Canon is a different brand, so I want I want to have a separate menu. But I've now created this um, uh, right here from the uh, configuration that that we did over here. So I'm pretty happy with that.